I've had a number of requests for more information on how to design a functional and reliable solar power system. Usually, the request is for powering critical items like a fridge or freezer during a power outage, for powering devices while camping, or for unattended equipment in remote locations. So I decided to share the design worksheet I developed for specking a dedicated solar power system. You can download this design workbook from my support site at www.desertprep.info. I put a link in the description below. Before I get started, please help the channel by hitting the like button and subscribing so you'll be notified when there's a new video. The design spreadsheet will calculate the number of batteries and solar panels you'll need to create a system to provide power in all seasons through inclement weather and at your particular latitude. The calculation accommodates designs for AC power devices or for the usually more efficient 12 volt DC devices. For each design alternative, there are two worksheets. A log sheet for recording power measurements from the devices across several days and a calculation sheet where you specify the design goals for your system. To begin work on your design, determine the device or devices you intend to power, log their power consumption across a few days, enter the reserve and recovery objectives for your system, and then get the resulting number of batteries and panels your project will require. I'll leave the logging stage until later in the video while we look at the main design sheets first. The calculation sheet will pick up the average power requirements from the log sheet. Once again, be sure you're using the appropriate calculation sheet for either DC or AC powered devices. To guide you, each calculation sheet has a set of instructions just below the calculations. You'll be entering values into the sheet using the ABC labeling. For A, let the system use the value it takes from the log sheet or overwrite the formula with your own value for your device's power requirements. It's important that this value reflect real-world power consumption in regular daily use. Logging your actual devices in your actual conditions using a power meter will produce the best results. B. Set the system reserve. This is how many non-sunny days the system can tolerate while still powering your devices. I selected three, so my system will be capable of powering my fridge for three days, even if it's overcast, raining, or snowing. C. Set the system recovery time, that is how many days of sun will be needed to fully recover when the batteries have run down due to lack of sun. In my case, I'm giving it three days to fully recover after three days without sun. D. Look up the daily charge hours available for recharging your system. The table to the right has links to a couple of sites that can help you estimate this number. Be wary of some sites that give only hours of full sun. Connecting panels in series can produce usable charging current for a greater part of the day, so you can enter something a little under the sunrise to sunset time. E. Enter the battery round trip efficiency for the particular batteries you intend to use. Since batteries give back something less than the amount of power used to charge them, the design sheet takes this into account. You need to get the actual number from your battery manufacturer's website, but for your convenience, typical rates for the main battery types are listed in the table to the right. F. Enter the capacity of the batteries you intend to use. I'm specifying 100 amp hour AGM batteries. G. Enter the power rating of the solar panels you intend to use in your project. Now you can get all the specs for the components that you'll need. H displays the total solar panel power needed to make your specifications. I shows the minimum battery capacity needed. J reports the number of batteries required for your project. In my case, battery bank capacity requirement is 196 amp hours, so the sheet specifies two 100 amp hour batteries. K reports the number of solar panels required. In my case, the required panel power is 182 watts, so the sheet specifies two 100 watt panels. Box L suggests the minimum power rating for your inverter. This is for a project intended to power AC devices. The sheet has a lower limit of 300 watts, as inverters below this tend to be pocket units unsuitable for mounting in a permanent configuration. Having some excess capacity will also add flexibility to the system's capability and is likely to extend the service life of the inverter. For your convenience, the table contains links to the best components I've selected after testing numerous alternatives. I'm not sponsored or paid by anyone, so all of these are items I paid for out of my own pocket and I recommend as they've met the standards for my own use. In case it's helpful, you can also enter the prices of components you intend to use and the design sheet will calculate a budget for your project. The design sheet takes many factors into account and should help you spec your project while accounting for pretty much everything that can affect the success of the unit. Now let's look at device power logging. 
Although you can get power requirements from device manuals or from the manufacturer websites, these don't tend to be too useful as they include safety margins and fudge factors and will almost certainly overstate the real power the devices use. For instance, the manual for the dual power fridge freezer I purchased for testing stated that it required 85 watts of power. The measured reality was that it used no more than 50 watts at full load during initial cooldown and then averaged roughly 12 watts after reaching operating temperature. If I'd used the 85 watt value from the manual, the design would have demanded six times as many batteries and solar panels and would have erroneously added thousands to the projected cost of the project. I suggest you measure your device across at least a few days and use the real world results for your design work. To log power consumption, get a meter and directly measure the power used. Depending on whether your devices run on AC or DC power, you'll need different meters. For AC devices, I use this meter to measure power in kilowatt hours. For DC powered devices, I use this meter to measure in watt hours. There are links to both in the description below and in the design spreadsheet you can download. For each of the AC and DC type projects, there's a companion logging sheet. Choose the appropriate log sheet, AC or DC, and record the timestamps and power measurements in the tinted columns of the appropriate spreadsheet. Add new values periodically across your test period. Begin your log by recording the start date and the time by editing the entry in the first row. Over the next few days, record the date and time plus the accumulated power. For AC devices, enter the accumulated kilowatt hours, or for DC devices, record the accumulated watt hours. Make sure you're using the appropriate log sheet once again. I hope this sheet can help you evaluate the requirements and budget for your own projects, and I hope that your projects are a complete success. So what do you think, and what have I missed? I always appreciate feedback in the comments. I read them all, and I've learned a great deal from the things that you share. Stay tuned for more videos on preparedness and solar. Stay safe and be prepared.